Okay, I think we can start again now with the benchmarks that are part of our workshop. Um, we will start with the video challenge session. Um, for the video ch challenge se session, we will have two benchmarks. One is the Kitty step data set and one is the more challenge step. Um, since there was some ambiguity regarding the deadline for the um, last submission, we actually have two winners for Kitty step this year and one winner for the mod challenge step data set. Um, before we start, I would like to congratulate all of you. And now we are happy to um, listen to your winning submission. We will start with Kitty step and with the first entry on this slide. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Hao Tian, uh, Hao Tian Zhang from the University of Washington. Uh, we are very glad to present our work, uh, the U3D MOLTS, which stands for uh, the Unified 3D Monocular Object uh, Localization, Tracking, and Segmentation, so which achieves this year's uh, BMTT Track 1 Challenge on the case step at the first place. Um, yeah, before uh, before introduce introduction to our master, so uh, I will briefly like divide my topic into three sections. So first of all, I will briefly go through the background for the MOTS and also the video panoply segmentations. And after that, I will introduce our method, uh, including the basic pipelines of our U3D MOLTS method. Uh, basically, it is designed for the MOTS task. And also mainly uh, talk about the core part uh, of the LogNet uh, Lock for track net inside of it. And as for the semantic segmentation part, we use the deep lead V3 and also the self training techniques to improve our semantic quality. And finally, and some experiments and also the demos will be shown to prove that our methods are accurate and also robust. Uh, well, uh, as we know that the reason proposed multi-object tracking and segmentation task requires people not only to provide the tracking results, but also the segmentation maps as well. Uh, the track RTNN actually utilizes a joint detection and tracking framework by adding a separate association embedding head. So the embedding head is inspired by the embedding vectors using person re-identification and each association vector actually represents the specific identity of an object, uh, which is extremely important for the tracking. So as this method only focuses on the one frame at a time, so which makes it this the method is an online method. And also more recently, uh, the previous multi-object tracking with the instant segmentation has also been elevated to the panoptic domain. Uh, while the new task requires people not only to uh, generate the tracking IDs along with the instance segmentation results across the video frames, uh, but also uh, requires the people to do the semantic segmentation at the same time. Uh, while the new benchmark data set named the step, uh, they're trying to address this long-term segmentation and tracking problem. And also together, they comes out with a new evaluation metric, which also provides a very important insight towards a denser, a pixel precise uh, video understanding. So based on the aforementioned related works, uh, that's how our solution comes out. Uh, actually, we divide the pan video panoptic segmentation task into two subtasks. Uh, the first one is the MOTS, which stands for the multi-object tracking and segmentation. And second is the semantic segmentation. So it's a basically like a two-stage method. Uh, while our U3D MOTS, which I will introduce in the next slide, is aimed to target the first task, the MOTS. So uh, the U3D MOLTS pipeline that actually starts with is a lock for track net. So the lock for track net is, uh, uh, which uh, is named after the uh, localization for the tracking network, is able to learn the 3D uh, estimation and also the instant level embedding simultaneously. So given the initial estimation from the network, 
So a fitness evaluation uh, optimization module is further ensured the localization accuracy and also obtain the object size. And afterwards, a 3D common filter and then are able to produce this, the robust links across the frames by leveraging the object's 3D IOU and also the feature similarity with the help of the Hungarian aggregate. Well, the three, uh, the localization network is actually built upon a, a Mars Garcia framework. So ResNet 50 is adopted as a convolutional backbone with a feature pyramid as our detection backbone. So the backbone takes the image to extract the feature maps as the input to a 3D tailored depth aware RPN. So depth aware RPN is actually designed for the reason uh, due to the high level features that relates to a 3D scene understanding are dependent on the depth. So we can uh, separate the feature map into the different robings and then apply the individual 2D convolutions for each of them. So we believe these depths aware kernels are enable the network to develop some location specific features and also the biases for each bin regions. And then um, the depths aware ROI aligned feature maps are then used to generate the standard mask RTN outputs that includes the 2D bounding, box, uh, bounding boxes and the class, uh, classification and also the infamous mask information. So the orientation head actually takes the same feature map as the input to generate the 3D orientation output. So although the representation of the euro angles are easily understandable and also interpretable for the 3D orientations, they are kind of sensitive to the non-interactivity and also the gimbal lock. So we instead, we use, uh, we transfer the euro angles to the photonians, think they are continuous and also can be easily enforced through the back propagations. And our 3D distance pad, uh, they take a concatenated input from both convolved 512 dimension features and also the features from the orientation hat to form more informative inputs for the 3D distance. So here, the Huber loss is adopted to formulate the penalty in a distance estimation. And also the delta, uh, which is uh, a hyperparameter, which can be determined by its attraction evaluation matrix. And also the total loss, which includes the 2D classification and also the regression loss, as well as the 3D orientation and distance regression loss, is minimized to train our proposed log for track net. For the multi has losses. So the determination of the hyperparameters weights for each loss is also very critical. So here we use the grid search based tuning method, which can help us to achieve the optimal performance of the whole network. So in addition to the 2D and 3D heads, then a spatial attention net with an embedding head are added to the network so as shown in this red figure. So the reason why we come out of this spatial attention neck is because we think that severe occlusions and truncations are usually a challenging cases in both detection and tracking tasks. So as the mass information, instance mass information is also available. So that pixel-wise sigmoid operation indicating the probability of the objectiveness is performed to highlight the foreground and also suppress the background. And the ROI features are then multiplied by the some uh, spatial attention map to purify the features. And then they were sent into the 3D hats and also the embedding hats for the further processing. So uh, the intuition of the embedding head is during the training, we actually want to utilize all the region proposals generated by the RPNs to learn the instance similarity by discriminating the positive regions from the negative ones. And the training of the embedding head and start by uh, giving the frame at the time t, and we sample a reference frame within, within its adjacent end frames in the temporal domain. So for each target, uh, the pairwise contrast of a lot is adopted here to train the embedding features, and it's meant to minimize the cosine distance of the target proposals to all the positive examples, while maximize the cosine uh, distance to the, all the negative examples. And also by balancing the positive and negative samples, we encourage the network to learn an embedding space 
they can effectively discriminate between instances while also being invariant to some perturbations, for example, like uh, the viewpoint or different lightning. And, and then after we get the 3D estimation from the log for TrekNet, uh, and also going through the uh, optimization modules, and then the accurate localization results, as well as the uh, discriminated features are then sent into an online 3D content filter to perform the uh, multi object tracking with the help of the Hungarian algorithm. So in order to make the whole system online, so the unassigned detected targets are then further associated with the short-term loss track width. And the track width that are missing for longer than some defined predefined threshold are considered as the terminated ones to ease the computation of the burden. And since we can already obtain uh, the previous results from the MOTS, so we can get the instance mask as well as their tracking IDs uh, for the semantic mask. So here we actually apply the a deep lab V3, which is uh, popular accepted for a whole computer vision community. Um, and also furthermore, we also apply the SDC net, which is also another work uh, to generate the pseudo labels and also the pseudo image for the self-training purposes. So the idea of SDC net is trying to utilize the video prediction modules to propagate the labels and then to some immediate uh, label neighbor frames uh, to try to solve the misalignment problems. And by combining the results from our previous MOTS results and also the semantic segmentation results, then we can actually obtain the accurate results for the whole panoptics video segmentation task. And overall, uh, we achieved our first place at this year's uh, track one of the VMGT challenge on the Kitty step. Um, so the evaluation metric is the SDQ, which stands for the tracking and segmentation quality, uh, which is consists of the two uh, basic uh, factors, including the association quality and also the segmentation quality. So our method uh, finally reaches the performance of 76, uh, 66.55 on the SDQ, uh, which ranks the top above all the submissions. And also apart from that, we also applied our method on the KDMOTS data set. And also, we ranked the top among the uh, current masters listed on the official uh, KDMOTS leaderboard. So, here are some qualitative demos to better visualize our uh, results on the KD set. So, this is the uh, testing sequence for uh, mailing and for the cards. So here we kind of show the demos into two parts because we just want to uh, show that our methods are divided into the two different stages and then we break them into together. You can see that the tracking quality and also the semantic quality of those uh, works perfect. And also this is the uh, testing sequence for the uh, uh, mainly targets for pedestrians and extensive experiments and also the demos have shown that our method is uh, pretty effective and also robust under the different autonomous driving scenarios. Yeah, uh, thank you for listening to uh, our presentation. I would also like to thank you for the uh, community members, the committee members to host this challenge. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to raise during the discussions or please refer to our technical reports for more details. Thank you. Thanks a lot and congratulations again for your amazing results. I think yeah, um, in terms of time, we might have um, some space for one question if there's mm -hmm. a question from the audience. Feel free to unmute yourself or write in the chat. There is one question. Yeah, so one question from the chat. What do you mm -hmm. think are the remaining issues um, to be resolved in this task? Right, uh, I think this task is pretty interesting. So uh, from the, because uh, actually I took 
part in the last year's BMTT challenge, which already focuses on the MOTS part, uh, which only stands for the uh, tracking as well as the instance uh, segmentation. But this year, uh, the challenge is even more harder. Uh, so uh, yeah, so actually we, our strategy is trying to divide the whole video panoptic segmentation into two different states. And then after we obtain the results from each stage, we try to merge them together. Uh, I guess this is also kind of like uh, some baseline methods introduced by the Kitty Stat paper. Um, yeah, um, so I think the maybe the remaining issues is that we're trying to like unify these tasks into one. So actually this can be done in our framework, but uh, uh, instead of like going through the RPN for each of the instances, we, we regress the, uh, try to regress the like the instance bus. We actually can already obtain the whole feature map, and then we can do uh, the semantic, uh, like the segmentations from the whole feature map. And then uh, it's like an end-to-end method, and then we can directly output their uh, instance map, their tracking IDs, as well as the whole uh, semantic feature maps, uh, semantic maps together. Yeah, I guess maybe like transfer our network to the end-to-end -end, uh, is our future aim. Thanks a lot. Um, I would like. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Uh, now I would like to move on to the second speaker for the Kitty Step benchmark, sure. um, achieving also um, amazing results on this benchmark, and is awarded uh, the second winning entry in this workshop. So I hope you're here and are ready to present. Hello, everyone. We are researchers from Baidu. Today, we would like to share our work named Robust Video Panoptic Segmentation and Tracking, which is one of the best solutions for key step challenge in the six benchmarking multi-target tracking workshop. First, we briefly introduce the task of segmenting and tracking every pixel. This task requires assigning a semantic class and identity preserving track ID to each pixel. The methods should predict semantic label for both scene and staff classes and focus on tracking cars and pedestrians. A new metric called segmentation and tracking quality, SDQ, is used for evaluation. It incorporates both the quality of the semantic segmentation and the association of pixels. As shown in the formula below, the overall STQ score is computed by taking the geometric mean of association quality AQ and the segmentation quality SQ. Here is an overview of our proposed robust video panoptic segmentation and tracking system. With a video sequence as an input, we first utilize an ensemble panoptic segmentation module to generate high quality segmentation results. Then a multi-object tracking module is adopted to associate instances to tracklists based on an integrated similarity measurement. We use a reality model and an optical flow model to estimate appearance and motion feature, respectively. And we adopt Hungarian algorithm to perform data association. Finally, we generate the output for every pixel with a semantic label and every car and pedestrian instance with a track ID. Next, we first introduce our proposed method for the panoptic segmentation. We adopt the state-of-art segmentation network mask former with a swing large backbone to solve the panoptic segmentation task. To further improve the performance at the semantic level, we also train a HMSA model with HRNet as a backbone. Both models are pre-trained on Cityscape's dataset. We also set higher weights for small objects during training and use test time augmentation strategies 
to generate better results. In order to merge two segmentation results, we evaluate the results of each semantic class using the SQ score on the validation set. As we can see in this visualization, for the category of terrain, as shown in the left circle, mask former performs better, while for the category of traffic light, as shown in the red circle, HMSA is better. During the merging step, we simply pick up the segmentation mask with higher MIOU for each semantic class. Next, we introduce our proposed method for MOT. We focus on associating instances with the existing tracklist according to their similarity. To realize robust association, we propose to measure the similarity of the combination of the appearance feature and the motion feature. First, the instance masks are used to group the images and mask out the background pixels in the bounding box. Then, we employ two ready models using the state-of-art ready framework to extract appearance features for cars and pedestrians, respectively. For the motion feature, we also adopt the optical flow method draft to work each predict mask and calculate the LU between the masks in consecutive frames. Furthermore, we form the combined similarity distance as a product of the cosine distance of the ready feature and the mask LU distance. The production is pr preferable over the sum as it requires a similarity of appearance and motion both to be high. Finally, we adopt Hungarian algorithm to perform association. To minimize the accumulated errors in long-term tracking, one common practice is that the unmatched predictions are kept for only a limited number of frames. However, this often results in broken trajectories when an ID reappears after a long period of occlusion. Thus, we further incorporate post-processing strategies to link these broken tracklists. Specifically, we adopt a greedy algorithm to merge the non-overlapping tracklists based on their similarities of their tracklist level appearance feature. Here we offer ablation studies on panoptic segmentation methods. We compared our method with the public baseline, deep life panoptic, and our optimization strategies based on mask former, such as small target weights, pre-trained models, and the test time augmentation strategies. We combine these tricks to get a higher SQ score. The table on the right shows a comparison of the merged results. Next, we offer a blushing studies on the association strategies. The results shows that considering temporal propagation and the appearance features simultaneously benefits the association quality. The relink strategy in post-processing step also improve our result. Finally, as shown in the KDS board, our proposed robust video panoptic segmentation and tracking method, or repeat in short, shows superiority on SQ score and yields a competitive SDQ score. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, and congratulations for your amazing results as well. Um, are there questions from the audience? I think there's one question from the chat. What kind of TTA did you apply? Test time augmentation. Oh, uh, yeah. 
uh, 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 for the test time augmentation, we use different size of input input images and uh, merge the result of the segmentation. Okay. Uh, uh, there's another question. Does the reality module work work well when objects are partially occluded? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in our experiments, uh, that uh, uh, using the uh, reality mode model only uh, did not achieve a best result. So we use the reality, reality feature and the motion feature together to achieve a robust association. Okay, are there any other questions from the audience? Um, may, maybe just one from my side. So what I find really amazing with uh, both winning entries is that <clears throat> even though as they, the, they achieved similar SQ score, I find it really interesting that um, um, one um, one participant achieved achieved uh, higher uh, um, uh, AQ score compared to um, the semantic score and uh, and vice versa. So I, I find this 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 really really interesting. So that very uh, that uh, that uh, one of the winners does better in terms of. Uh, tracking and another of, in terms of semantics. So I, I was just curious, do you have any comment on that? Or like, do you see any way of uh, reconciling both methods and uh, uh, further boost both terms and get uh, higher SQ? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, our, mo our method has a higher SQ but lower AQ. Uh, I think uh, one of the reasons is uh, our association is uh, is doing on 2D and uh, without 3D informations. And I think uh, the 3D informations will ha help uh, the tracking uh, help the tracking algorithm to uh, in some occlusion cases. Uh, and uh, we will try we will try to improve the uh, improve the tracking method maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's uh, that's a very good uh, point. Yeah. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, thank you. Okay, then thanks again.